Hey guys, it's Vaughn. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm a YouTube blogger, but I'm also an autism mom. This is an ongoing video series where I share my experience as a new mom to a toddler with autism. Hey, good morning you guys. Welcome back to another Autism Mom vlog. Thanks for tuning in today. Today I'm just going to take you guys along with us to the dentist. The reason that I wanted to share this experience with you guys is because when it was time for Ann to go to the dentist for the first time, her pediatrician had asked us if we had found a special needs dentist. And at first, I didn't know what he was talking about. I was a little confused. I didn't know how to feel about that. I was like, special needs dentist because I had this vision in my head that it was going to be some isolated dentistry with very strange practices and it was just going to be very like obscure for us and something super different that we would not be able to get with so I had hesitated at first because I needed a moment to like think about you know how we were going to approach it so I ended up doing a little research and found a dentist in our area it's basically a pediatric dentistry with a capacity for special needs so with the special needs piece to all of this what I had to learn was that essentially we were just looking for a dentist that could accommodate children with um, needs that were special right so everything from children with behavior issues to children on the spectrum to children who are just very adverse to having their mouth touched or felt it could be children with cerebral palsy children with ADHD anything you name it it just means that that dentist does not discriminate so it's an all-inclusive dentistry is basically what it is so that's what we had to learn so we found a really really good dentist you guys that's where we're going today this morning and I'm going to take you guys along I am going to try to vlog it as best I can in situations like this usually um, it is not okay to have a camera because there are HIPAA laws and privacy issues and things like that so I'm probably not gonna take this camera I'm probably just gonna use my iPhone so I can be like really discreet so I just want to show you guys the setup of everything what you'll notice is that they have a little private room that is all glassed off from the rest of the dentist office and I do believe it is soundproof and so it does help the kids and the parents maintain some dignity in the situation you know if kids start screaming or having their moment the rest of the dentist's office doesn't have to experience it so you don't have to feel uncomfortable in any way it's really really good so Anne is downstairs screaming because she's having a tough morning this morning she doesn't want to get dressed she doesn't want to go so I'm going to have to just help her through that. I'm gonna bring some snacks and whatnot. Today's dentist visit is actually Anne's second visit in her lifetime. The first time we went, Anne did pretty good. Um, her, the, the behaviors that she was exhibiting were very typical of a child her age at the dentist for the first time. So it wasn't a really big deal. I am interested to see how she's going to be today because during her first visit, as she was getting her teeth cleaned, she was crying and she was very uncomfortable and the dental hygienist basically told us that for before the next visit that we should get her an electronic toothbrush to kind of help her get used to having those vibrations in her mouth and just kind of get used to like having um, a tool, you know, function in that way close to her face and then she would kind of get used to it. So we've actually been doing that ever since her first visit. I'm talking about when as soon as we left the dentist, we went straight to um, CVS and bought an electronic toothbrush for her. So I'm interested to see how she's going to do today having had that experience with that electronic brush. So I'm taking you guys along so that you can experience it. Um, so let's go. So here's Anne. She's taking off her shoes because she is just being a little bad girl today. Anne, why did you take those off? Why did you do it? So we basically just got dressed and I just did her hair. So she's looking all cute and everything. I'm looking like a bum. But we're gonna put your shoes back on, Anne, okay? Sit down. She really doesn't like shoes, so it's really tough to get her to keep them on. Come on, Ann. You gotta put your shoe on, little girl. When she watches her little YouTube Ooh. cartoons, she gets yeah, pissed yeah, when it goes yeah. on a commercial or when she accidentally pushes the wrong button and it you know, goes to a different cartoon, she gets pissed. So it's really stressful to me sometimes to even have her watching YouTube cartoons. Look, Anne, look.
Yeah, like a little cat. Can you sit right here for me? Come on, it's okay, Ann. Come on. <laughs> All right, we can open it at home, okay? That one, the chicken one? The rooster or something? <laughs> Here, grab your stickers. Look in. Do you want a pair of sunglasses? Get it. Thanks. I know you like these. I know you like those. You look so cool. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. Push, push, push. Push, push, push. You got your sunglasses. Come on, let's go. Thank you. Come on. Girl, just got back home. <laughs> I'm freezing I have to put on my robe. But anyway, great dentist visit, you guys. Did y'all see? And is so much better compared to her first visit that I described to you all. She was not uncomfortable at all. I mean, I'm almost starting to think, do we even need the special needs accommodations for next time? I don't know. But I'm gonna keep working with her on the teeth brushing and all that stuff until she gets to a point where she's independent with it because like right now I'm basically brushing her teeth because she doesn't know how to do it well but even her dentist reassured that even typical kids like they're not gonna be able to do it on their own until they're like 10 so we're not rushing or anything. I was just so happy. She had a really good um, checkup. Like the dentist said, her teeth are all very perfect. We are doing a good job cleaning her teeth and keeping her teeth healthy. So that was good for me to hear as her mom. But you guys, that was such a stress-free visit. Like, this is what I'm saying. So. Chicago Kids Pediat Pediatric Dentistry. Highly recommend it to you guys, and I am gonna put their information in the description box. So for you all who are looking for a dentist, um, just for your kids generally, or if you are specifically looking for a special needs dentist, you should definitely check out um, Ann's Dentist because as you saw, it's a great facility. Everyone in there is super nice super patient like they just really care about your kids and they make you feel like they care about your kids so i would just highly recommend them to you guys because they definitely took the stress out of ann's dentist visits like that is the last thing i stress about is her dentist visits so hey guys so i know this is a different kind of setup than how i usually share on these autism mom vlogs but i just wanted to have a discussion with you guys in today's vlog so it'll be a little bit different but we'll get back to the regular group this is just something a little different that I want to try out and just kind of come on here and talk to you guys about um, different issues um, that autism moms face. So for today's content piece, I asked you guys on my Instagram page 
if um, you guys wanted me to talk about different topics. I basically gave you guys two options and I kind of came up with those topics because it's two bits of subject matter that I have seen come up quite a bit in the autism community. And the first one was autism signs, like early signs, the things that lead to an autism diagnosis right in the beginning. And then the other one was what not to say to autism moms. So I kind of left it up to you guys to choose between the two, which one you wanted me to kind of prioritize and talk about first. I'm definitely gonna talk about both of them, but in today's video, I'm going to focus on early signs of autism because that is the one that got the most votes on my Instagram page. And I always like to honor you guys' requests in real life. I don't wanna just give you options and then do whatever I wanna do. I actually wanna honor your requests. So I'm going to cover that topic in this video. And then in my next one, we'll talk about what not to say to autism moms. Fair? Okay. <laughs> so when I think about the early signs of autism, I can't help but think about those parents who are in denial. And to be fair, that's probably some of the most difficult times uh, that a family will experience in their autism journey. We went through it. I'm sure many others can attest to having gone through it. But the way I want to preface this chat is to say that any parents, moms, or dads who suspect anything different about their child or if they have any kind of concerns about their kid's development, that you go to your child's pediatrician immediately. You do not hesitate, you do not wait, you do not try and listen to what your friends are telling you, especially if they have neurotypical children. I'm sorry, but those are not the people that you need to be getting advice from. You go straight to their pediatrician and you you, you ring the alarm, right? You raise your hand, You you, express your concerns and you have a open dialogue with your child's doctor, you do not delay. I also wanna say that with this video, I hesitated even doing it um, just because I don't want this to be this sort of checklist for people that you check off the list and you're like, oh, well, my child definitely doesn't have autism, so I'm good. I don't want this to be that. I'm more so sharing because I know a lot of you guys are curious. I do realize that most of you watching this video probably are not autism parents at all, and that's great. I welcome you guys. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure that you do so. I also wanted to mention that early signs of autism are widely available online. You can easily Google early autism signs if you really want to learn a lot more. For today's video, I wanted to share our personal experience with what the signs were, what signs we didn't experience and maybe are not even experiencing even till this day. I just kind of wanted to share like a realistic comparison between what the experts say you should be seeing or not seeing versus what a real life family like us saw or didn't see. So I'll start off talking about um, the signs that were kind of weak. So oftentimes with children on the spectrum, in the beginning, you'll hear a lot about babies not making eye contact with their parents or their loved ones. And we didn't really see a whole lot of that. What was interesting about Anne's early development was that she was actually on track um, to be a typically developing um, toddler. She was on track, especially in the very beginning. When it came to the eye contact thing, um, there was a little bit of concern there because at that time Anne had a nanny for like the first 18 months of her life She wouldn't really make eye contact with our nanny and we didn't know anything about autism or the signs or the symptoms or any of that So we just thought that it was because she was not as comfortable with her as she was with us because she would make eye contact with us In fact, that was that was what she did. I mean, that's the way that we connected with her She was always looking into our eyes. She was always interacting with us you know, exchanging facial expressions and laughing and doing, you know, baby things, cooing, all kinds of things that were seemingly normal. But she was not necessarily making eye contact with her nanny. There was a slight disinterest in her surroundings. So kind of like that unbothered feel, like, you know, when there's a kid that's just kind of, they don't, they don't cry a whole lot, they don't seem to need a whole lot. They are just kind of in their own world. They kind of, they appear to kind of self-soothe. They just don't seem to be really as needy of different things. I mean, for a parent that can be an amazing thing. So that's not necessarily something that would ring the alarm, right? And then the kind of things that we didn't see at all in Anne uh, were things like, you know, lack of, you know, facial expressions, lack of smiling, lack of laughing. I mean, she was trying to engage in communication in the way that she could at the age she was. I mean, I'm talking like six months, seven months, eight months. And then it just kind of started to like go away. It was almost as though she started to forget the things that she had once learned. One of the things though that we did notice is that she would never point. Let's talk about the strong, signs that we saw early on and these were the reasons that I and my husband went to our daughter's doctor and started to kind of have those developmental conversations. The first thing, the most important one for us was the lack of speech. I was taking a lot of cues from my parents because 
they've had multiple children and you know they would know and my mom was very concerned about Anne's lack of speech development probably around 10 or 11 months now I know that sounds kind of early but all of my mom's kids, all of us, we were taught. I started talking at 11 months. I had some complete phrases by the time I was 12 months. My sis Kay uh, knew her alphabet by the time she was uh, 18 months. All of us were kind of hitting our milestones either early or right on time. For someone like my mom, it triggered her concerns like right away. And she started to kind of talk to me about it and you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know anything about autism. I don't know anything about anything. So I was just kind of listening to her concerns and then just kind of taking them to the doctor. So so we were in talks with uh, Ann's doctor very early on, but in the medical practice, there are certain uh, thresholds that, needs to, that need to be met before you jump to any kind of conclusions. So there was a period where we had to kind of wait and see what would come next because as you guys know, I'm sure you've heard this millions of times, kids develop at their own pace. I hear a lot of parents talk about that and it is true to a certain extent but when it comes to speech you have to be really careful about that whole kids develop at their own pace thing because because those milestones are important right sometimes you'll have parents who will try to talk themselves out of the possibility of autism um, or other developmental delays i mean it's understandable you guys believe me i get it coming to terms with autism can be a very difficult thing for parents it can be probably one of the most difficult things if not the most difficult thing that you will ever have to do in your life so i get it but it is so important to seek the support and help to get you through it because it's not about you. You cannot delay the help and support that could possibly help your child, especially through those early intervention months, just because your ego is not accepting of the possibility or, you know, you're embarrassed or you, you know, you don't want to have to deal with it. You, you know, you can't let that get in the way of your child getting help. And so we, and when I say we, I mean me and my husband had to really, really work on ourselves and get over that because, um, it was not about us, it was about Anne and she needed to have that early intervention. So you really have to put your own personal needs and convictions and pride to the side, especially in those first months. I mean, you really have to look at it this way, you know, if you go through all the trouble of having your kid in therapy programs and having them evaluate and all that, and it turns out that there was nothing there, then you've lost nothing, you know? But if you don't act on it and you, you miss out on all of those vital, all that vital time that you could have been helping that kid. One of the other things that we noticed, um, and this was actually after the fact of her diagnosis and everything, um, but it's one of the things that stood out to us as, as strong, um, is her sleep patterns. That is one of the things that we most struggle with because Anne would wake up a lot throughout the night, almost like a newborn. And it was really interesting because when she was a newborn, she never did that. Um, so this was something that happened a lot later. And it's very disruptive to the household and it's very frustrating because you're not able to get any sleep if you're having to tend to a toddler who won't sleep and it wasn't just that she would wake up and maybe be crying or whatever but it was that she would wake up and be active so she would be like in the pitch black room trying to play with toys trying to climb on things trying to escape from her room different things and so it's very it's very stressful because you don't want the kid to get hurt in their exploration you know in the middle of the night so we had to take different measures to try and make sure that she would stay safe through the night. We tried all kinds of remedies to get her to stay asleep through the night, working with her doctor on it, working with her therapists on it, just trying to come up with a plan. And her sleep patterns have actually gotten a lot better, so we're really happy about that, just as an update. But that was one of the things, because her sleep, her lack of sleep through the night was severe. I mean, and it started like, probably around like maybe 20 months old. I mean, she, her whole infancy, she had great sleep behaviors, but this just kind of started like around 20 months. One of the other things that came through pretty strong was Anne's lack of ability to learn new things. That was one of the most um, glaring symptoms that we found. I mean, I had all these toddler learning programs and all these different things that I had had for her um, for us to do together and for her nanny to kind of go over with her they were kind of like little lessons um for throughout the day because she did have a full-time nanny at the time and so that's who was with her most of the time and it was really difficult for her to pay attention and difficult for her to participate and be like interested in this, the, the lessons and I thought that maybe I just had like the wrong products and I was just buying like all this different stuff trying to see what would work. We just couldn't get through to her and it was very frustrating because it was like a brick wall between us and and having her learn new things and, and we later found out through therapy that those are called barriers to learning and it has to do with um, 
some of the behaviors that are present with kids who have autism and they are you know, considered barriers to learning. And there's different ways to break through those barriers and we are finding out um, effective ways to do that. But in the beginning, we were just like, what the heck is going on? Also her play skills were really poor. She would play with all of her toys in exactly the same way. So if you were to present her with a doll and a truck, she would play with both of them exactly the same and they, it was inappropriate play, right? So it would be like her using another object to just bang on the things and she wasn't playing with them in the way that um, they were intended to be played with. I mean, if there's a toy with wheels, you expect a kid to roll the wheels or something and wanted to flip things over. She wanted to throw things. She wanted to play with the toys the way she wanted to play with them. And that brings me to my next major point, you guys. If you don't take anything else from these symptoms that I'm talking to you about, this is the one thing that you should take from it. And that is that autism is more about the absence of normal behavior more so than it is about the presence of abnormal behavior. Let that settle in and, and soak in for a moment, you guys. And I'm talking to the mom out there who is curious and on the fence about whether or not she should have her kid evaluated uh, for autism. If you wait around to see if your kid is gonna do something odd or strange, you are missing a huge window of opportunity to help your kid. I don't know how else to put it. Anne never ever did anything abnormal or strange for the most part, you know? She, she seemed like a normal behaving child. She was loving, she was curious. She, you know, everything was kind of, was kind of on track to being like normal. Nothing that would cause, you know, alarm or make us feel like, oh my God, like what is happening? If you're waiting for something like a breakthrough like that to happen, it's probably not going to. It's more about the absence of normal. It's about the things that she should be doing that she's not doing. And the way that you know that is having conversations with your doctor or even just observing other children her age. Anne has a lot of cousins and friends and things at her age. So it was easy for us to kind of see and compare. Um, you don't want to compare to the point where you are making yourself miserable and overly stressed out, but you do want to be smart and keep your eyes open and see, you know, what it is that your child should probably be doing. Um, so that's key. And that was key for us in all of this, because once we understood and accepted that fact, we were really able to observe Anne in a productive way in a way that we could identify, um, where she needed help and to get that help for her. If it helps for any parents out there, um, you can always get the help privately. You don't have to tell your family. You don't have to tell your friends. We didn't start telling people about Anne's diagnosis until at least like six months into um, her therapy program. We needed to wrap our minds around everything first before we started letting other people into our precious space of vulnerability. You know, we needed to build up our strength and and endurance and, or against it before we started um, involving other people. Plus I knew people were gonna have a thousand questions. So I wanted to be able to at least address the questions um, from an educated perspective and not be like all ignorant like we used to be. I mean, if that helps, that's one way to kind of approach it. So when we talk about the symptoms and things, I know that there are, um, you know, autism is a spectrum, so there are various different behaviors and instances that may occur for some children that may not occur for others. I know that a lot of the things that I've read about what to expect from autism, we don't see it at all in Anne. And that's what made me really skeptical in the, skeptical in the beginning because I was just like, you know, going through the list, you know, I'm doing like probably most moms, you know, going through the list of qualifiers and saying, nope, she doesn't do that. Nope, that not that. Nope, nope. You know what? She doesn't have autism. You know, I did that before. Um, I can't even lie. Um, and one of the things were like, you know, the different behaviors that you hear a lot about or that you read a lot about exhibiting violence or self in, self injury, problematic behaviors and things like that. And has never exhibited any of that. Um, but things can change. I mean, she's only two, she'll be three in October, but you know, things can evolve a lot later. I mean, that's how, that's how, it happens, you know, one day your child can be this way, the next day they could be another. So we don't know what the future holds. We just know that we are emotionally prepared for whatever um, turns and pivots may take place with Anne's condition. And we just want to be, you know, on the up and up, be educated, stay, you know, in the know, stay up on all the latest reading and things and all the latest developments with autism, just so that we can better prepare ourselves for whatever the future holds. And another thing that I wanted to say before I wrap up this chat is um, definitely 
put comments and questions below you guys if you have any I would love to help and and I just want this space in general to kind of just be a safe space to discuss you know autism in a respectful way of course with one another and you know you can vent you can you know cry you can do whatever you need to do but I just kind of wanted to play my part and and creating you know using my platform to help create a safe space to discuss these kind of things that you can't necessarily discuss just anywhere right uh, but what I do want to say and I want you guys to keep this in the back of your mind at all times whenever you watch any of my autism videos or any of my autism content is that I'm not here to try to cure Anne or heal her or you know uh, fix her and things like that that's not what I'm here for I accept her for who she is and what she is so through all of this I would say I'm in a constant quest for information education understanding acceptance like that's really where I am I'm so at peace with this I love my daughter so much I cannot imagine life without her with all of her little quirks and all of her appointments and therapy sessions and all the things that that are required of me as her mother I would not change them I am up for the job you know I take pride in my family and she she is mine and, and I represent her, she represents me. So me and my husband, you know, my family and as a whole, we are in this for her and her best interests. And you know, I, I'm not here to try to, you know, force her to be something that she's not capable of. My only goal is to um, give her the best opportunities to be the best her that she can be, to help her understand the world through her eyes the best way that I can. I don't want her to be unhappy. I don't want her to be having anxiety. I don't want her to have to be taking medications and things to try to cope. I just want to give her love, safety, and an opportunity to be her best self, just like everybody else wants for their children. So that's all. Not here looking for some miracle potion to like change her and all that. Just here to make her life beautiful. I don't know how else to explain it. You know, um, she deserves the best just like anybody else. So I think that's it for um, this particular segment. I'll probably just end this video here because I'm pretty sure it'll be kind of long of a discussion. But for my next one, you guys definitely tune in on uh, October 1st because it'll be another autism mom vlog and then in that vlog I'm going to be discussing um, what not to say to autism moms or what not to say to autism parents so that'll be coming up next love you guys I thank you so much for tuning in definitely subscribe for more share this video with someone you know who needs to see it um, comment like girl do all that stuff make this video crack okay we need to we need to grow this community on here um, and I will talk to you guys in my next one bye